Welcome everyone. And thank you for taking the time to learn more information about the grade eight to nine transition. This is an exciting time for grade eight students and families, and we are here to help you navigate the TDSB as you look ahead to high school. This session will assist you in making informed choices about courses, programs, and schools available throughout the Toronto District School Board. Please note that this webinar is being recorded. The chat has been disabled, but you can ask questions in the Q&A. There are TDSB central staff, including centrally assigned principals and program coordinators here to answer your questions. We will be using the chat function to share helpful links with you throughout the presentation. We have enabled closed captioning and while the captions are not perfect, they may assist some participants. There are also interpretation services available. And please click the interpretation button to access this service. Finally, please note, once again, this meeting is being recorded and the recording will be available on the TDSB guidance site next week. And now for the land acknowledgement. We acknowledge we are hosted on the lands of the Mississaugas of the Anishinaabe, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Wendat. We also recognize the enduring presence of all First Nations, Métis, and Inuit peoples. At this time, I'd like to introduce Audley Salmon, Associate Director of Learning Transformation and Equity, to bring greetings from the board. Director Salmon? Thank you so much, Lisa, and welcome parents. It's a real pleasure to be here this evening with you as you start the process of making some decisions around the transition to grade nine. I have to tell you, I too share the trepidation that each of you has as a parent, as I have a child that is moving from grade eight to grade nine. So this evening's session is really, really important. And I know as a parent, there's a little bit of anxiousness that's taking place right now for us all. I want to start by saying thank you to staff for putting on this particular presentation because the one key thing that each of us needs as a parent is information. And that information will allow us and help us to make informed and good choices for our son, daughter, and for our students. So as we go forward tonight, one of the things that I just want to say is this. One of the things that I've always heard as a parent in schools is the fact that as students approach grade nine, parents have this tendency to want to step back because kids are encouraging them to step back. As a former secondary principal, I want to say to each one of you tonight, as your student, as your son, as your daughter transitions to secondary school, take a step forward, be active, be involved, and be engaged as a parent, because in doing so, it will ensure and help to make sure that your child has a successful secondary career. So thank you so much for being here this evening. We look forward to the opportunity to learn together. And please, if you have questions, make sure to follow up with the school principal, with the school community around it. Lisa and all, thank you so much for the work that you've done in order to bring this to us this evening. Back to you. Thank you, Associate Director Simon. I would like to introduce to you Dr. Renee Rollins, who will be taking us through the next section of slides. She is currently a vice principal at Birchmount Collegiate Institute. However, Dr. Rollins was the former coordinator of guidance, career development, and student well-being, and has a wealth of experience with the transition process. I now pass the mic to Dr. Rollins. Thank you, Lisa. I'm really happy to be here today to present alongside a phenomenal team who I'd like to introduce at this time. You've already met our Associate Director of Learning Transformation and Equity, uh, Audley Salmon. Here with us tonight also is System Superintendent of Secondary Programs in E-Learning, Ronnie Felsen. We also have centrally assigned principals, Reiko Fuentes, Lisa Edwards, who you just heard from, and Angela Kakamo. Today, we're also fortunate to be joined by central staff who will be available to answer questions regarding the respective areas in the Q&A. We have Linda Edwards, centrally assigned principal for virtual learning, e-learning, global competencies. Katia Palumbo, centrally assigned principal for special education and inclusion. We have three K-12 special education needs transition navigators, Kate Miles, Cynthia Scarano, and Ashley Weiss. 
We also have Alan Easton, who is the centrally assigned principal of learning transformation and equity. Patricia Davies, centrally assigned vice principal of e-learning. Liliana Martins, the coordinator of French language programs, classical and international languages. Jason Toe, coordinator of academic pathways and secondary mathematics. And Melissa Rabess, central lead teacher for guidance, career development, and student well-being. So today, we will be highlighting the following top 10 tips in our presentation. First, we'll talk about finding your designated school by address, also known as your home school. We'll talk about secondary programs, out of area admissions, and secondary schools without a boundary. What happens if you change your mind about your admission acceptance? Secondary French programs, special education programs as you move into secondary school course selection for grade eight to nine students, what you need to graduate, what to expect in high school, including a look at your timetable and important dates in the grade eight to nine transition process. We will also share resources to help you find information and to support you during this exciting time as you continue planning for grade nine. So let's get started. So the first of our top 10 tips and considerations for the transition to high school is finding out the secondary school that your child may attend which is based on your residential address. To access this information, please go to the link www.tdsb.on.ca and click Find Your School at the top of the TDSB website. When you click Find Your School, uh, the Find Your School link, you'll see a window such as this. When you select By Home Address, you can enter your street name and you'll find the secondary designated school for your address. Every home school, that is your designated school by address will provide a wide variety of academic and extracurricular activities that will support all post-secondary pathways. When you enter your street name, you'll find your designated schools by address, including your elementary school, senior public school if applicable, and secondary school options. In the example on the screen, these addresses have multiple options for their secondary school by address. In the first example, the family has a choice between R.H. King Academy and David and Mary Thompson. In the second example, the family can choose between Sir Wilfrid Laurier Collegiate and R.H. King. Once a student has been admitted to a secondary school, they are expected to attend that school until graduation. If you wish to attend the other listed schools, you'll have to apply through out of area admissions. Now, some addresses may have schools listed as technological programming or commercial school options. These legacy technical and commercial boundaries no longer apply, and these schools are no longer automatic options for September 2025. The schools are now considered secondary schools without a boundary, and we will review how students from across the city can access these schools later in the webinar. To take you through the next few tips, I'll pass the mic over to Reiko Fuentes, Centrally Assigned Principal, Secondary Programs. Thanks so much, Renee. So number two, secondary programs. So I'm going to share uh, further details about some of the secondary program options that you may want to explore and consider. Secondary central student interest programs, Afrocentric secondary programs, alternative schools, Indigenous education, and the high performing athlete programs. TDSB students have access to programs that offer unique opportunities and focus on a variety of interests. Student interest programs are designed for students with an interest and passion for a particular area of study. Admissions are interest-based and all students are invited to participate in the application process. There are six different types of secondary central student interest programs. The arts, which now includes the former cyber arts programs, exceptional athlete program, integrated technology, international baccalaureate, leadership, and our math science and technology programs. On the Central Student Interest Program homepage uh, that's shown on the slide right now, students can find the Google Calendar of all of the open houses and the list of important dates. Please note that all Central Student Interest Program open houses are scheduled before the application deadline of November the 22nd. Additionally, this is where the link to the online application will be found in that green box uh, on November the 4th. For more information about Central Student Interest Programs, please be sure to attend the Student Interest Program webinar, which is tomorrow evening from 7 to 8.30. The link to register is available in the chat. 
Many more details uh, will be given around central student interest programs uh, at tomorrow's webinar. So please hold questions about these programs until then. And just like this webinar, tomorrow's webinar will be recorded for those unable to attend, and the Q&A and the slides will also be posted and shared. Students from across the city can now be part of the Afrocentric secondary programs offered at Winston Churchill Collegiate Institute in the East and Downsview Secondary School in the West. These programs include an Afrocentric approach to learning that is embedded in core courses. The curriculum draws on African-centered sources of knowledge and perspectives to create a rich, diverse educational experience that builds an environment of high academic uh, achievement, increased student engagement, and enrich cultural pride for all schools. To learn more about how to apply to these programs, please visit the individual school websites and contact the schools directly. There are 21 secondary alternative schools across the TDSB that are highly engaging, smaller learning environments. Each school has a distinct identity and focus. These schools are ideal for students seeking an alternative to mainstream education and for those who want to take an active role in their own learning. TDSB alternative schools are open to any resident of Toronto. Space in alternative schools is limited. The application process is different for each alternative school, and you can learn more by visiting the individual school websites. From the list of schools shown on the screen right now, you can see that the schools are geared toward differing grade ranges, and not every secondary alternative school has a grade 9 program available. Indigenous Education. The Urban Indigenous Education Centre, or UIEC, has been engaged in focused Indigenous education work in the Toronto District School Board since 2008. Guided by the UIC Elders Council, the UIC is dedicated to enhancing First Nations, Métis, and Inuit students' well-being and achievement, and creating opportunities for Indigenous education for all staff and students in the TDSB by focusing on the seven canopies. At the secondary level, there are three learning environments supported by the UIEC. Kapapa Machakwe, the Wandering Spirit School of Toronto, the Native Learning Centre, and the Native Learning Centre East. Please visit the Indigenous Education website that's in the chat to learn more about these schools and their programs. High-performing athlete programs provide academic programming for students who are high-level athletes involved in provincial, national, or international levels of competition. In order to meet the demands of intense training schedules, schools provide more flexible timetables in order to balance school with out-of-school commitments so that athletes can strive for both academic and athletic excellence. Students can apply for a morning program to accommodate afternoon training or an afternoon program when training takes place in the morning. Additionally, special consideration is given for school missed as a result of competition. There are three new sites offering this unique program to student athletes opening in the fall of 2025. At the elementary level, the program at St. Andrews Middle School is being relocated to Alaya Middle School, and a new site is being initiated at Military Trail Public School. Both schools will be taking applications for grade 6 entry. At the secondary level, West Hill Collegiate will be supporting student athletes in the East and will be admitting students in grade 9 for September 2025. The admission criteria for the programs is currently under review. The central online application will be available for these programs in early 2025. Please check the High Performing Athlete Program website for more details in the upcoming months. Number three of the top 10 tips is out of area admissions, formerly known as optional attendance. As heard earlier, each student has a home school or a designated school by address linked to their address of residence, and that school will provide rich, rich programming options that support all pathways. Some students may wish to apply to a school elsewhere in the system. Students may be looking for specific courses or programs such as technical or specialized programming that's not available at their home school, or they may wish to attend a school that better meets their travel needs. This is done through the out of area admissions process. This process is also used for students wishing to engage in remote learning and attend virtual secondary school for September 2025. This application for those who are currently in in-person learning can be done through the secondary out of area application. 
applicants may submit an online application for out of area admissions for one program, either a regular program, a French uh, intensive language program, or as I mentioned, remote learning. Families that require support in accessing technology should connect with their current school for assistance. The online application will be open in January after the winter break, so there's plenty of time to attend open houses and to learn more about your school options, including your designated school by address or home school. It's important to note that not every school is able to accept applications from out of area students, and this will be based on the local demands on the school and possibly a, a, a lack of available space in the school. So we have several different out of area admission statuses. If a school is closed to out of area admissions, the school is not able to admit any out of area students and only students living in the area will be able to attend that school. At the elementary level, if a school has very limited spaces, they may only be able to accept applications from students with a sibling attending and returning to the requested school and their status would be called limited siblings. Other secondary schools that have a small amount of space potentially available, may be able to accept applications from students with siblings in grade 11 or grade 12 already attending and returning to the requested school in September 2025, and applications from students attending a feeder school in the same program who do not live in the area. Other students may not be able to apply to these schools with the status of limited siblings or feeder school. Stu uh, schools with a status of limited can accept applications from any student. In all of these schools, if demand for access is greater than the space available, schools will select students through a lottery or a random selection system. Schools will only be able to admit students if and as stu space is available. The information about the upcoming year of out of area admission statuses can be found at the site listed in the chat. We have provided for you a list of secondary schools that are currently closed to out of area admissions. These schools will not be able to accept any applications from students living outside of the area, and these schools are not included in the online application. The list on the screen now shows secondary schools with out of area admission statuses of limited sibling or feeder school. So again, there is a smaller amount of space that's potentially available. Uh, and again, only students that have siblings already in grade 11 or 12 attending to the school and returning to the school in September of 2025, those applicants may apply. Or students that attend a feeder school, which is a grade seven or eight school where the majority of students live in area and are heading to that secondary school, but that particular student may not live within the area they may uh, be able to apply for out of area admissions to these schools. Other students may not apply. And again, the school will admit students as space is available. Again, if demand for access is greater than the space available, students will be selected through a, ran a lottery or a random selection process. Most of our secondary schools though have limited status, which means that all students who are interested may apply for out of area admissions. Spaces will be filled by grade according to the admissions priorities. For each of the admissions priorities in order, a random selection process will be undertaken if the number of applications exceeds the available spaces. You can learn more about the priorities by visiting the out of area admissions website. It's important to note that schools will not know the number of available seats until early February when the random selection process takes place. The number of spaces is dependent on the number of local or in area students that are planning to attend the school. So principals will not be able to tell you how many students they will be able to admit through out of area admissions at their open houses. In certain parts of the TDSB, there were two types of schools historically established, collegiates and technical or commercial schools. Students were streamed into programs at the school. Each residential address gave students access to both a collegiate along with anywhere from one to four technical or commercial schools. 
Currently, these schools provide a full complement of courses and programs to support students on their journey to university, college, apprenticeship, or the workplace. The programming at the former technical and commercial schools is rich, and students from across the city should have access to the unique learning opportunities that are available. The legacy boundaries have been dissolved, and all addresses continue to have access to a local collegiate or secondary school. Without the legacy technical or commercial boundaries, these schools have become secondary schools without a boundary, and the schools are accessible to all. Any interested student can apply to attend a secondary school without a boundary. The schools are Central Technical School, Central Toronto Academy, Danforth Collegiate and Technical Institute, Western Technical Commercial School, and Northern Secondary School. It should be noted that Northern Secondary School does have a small collegiate boundary. Students residing in this boundary continue to have guaranteed access to Northern and do not need to apply in order to attend. Some of these schools were unable to accept students from out of the area. Now, students from all across the city can apply to attend a secondary school without a boundary. These schools offer the same all-round composite programming offered by local collegiates, as well as rich opportunities in technological programming at four of the five schools. In keeping with truth and reconciliation, access for First Nations, Métis, and Inuit students will be supported outside of the application process. Admissions at secondary schools without a boundary will be supported and accommodated at any regular intake time in regular programs. The application to attend a secondary school without a boundary is included as part of the secondary out of area admissions application. This application is open for the first three weeks after the return from winter break in January. Within the application, applicants can opt to apply for either one out of area option one secondary school without a boundary option, or they may opt to apply to both. Applicants will be prioritized and seated in the available seats at each of the schools. Applicants with siblings already attending the requested secondary school without a boundary and returning to the school the following year will be seated first. 30% of the available seats in any grade will be held for applicants indicating an interest and commitment to taking technology courses in each year of attendance. This priority does not apply to Central Toronto Academy. Students selecting this option that are not seated in the 30% of seats will be considered as part of Priority 4 if they're TDSB students or Priority 5 if they're non-TDSB students. Applicants residing within collegiate areas that have historically contributed large number of students to the former technical and commercial schools and have limited ability to receive an influx of additional students due to building or site constraints will be the next priority. Current TDSB students will be prioritized next before non-TDSB applicants and then applicants from outside of the City of Toronto. The collegiate priority applies for applicants living within the following boundaries. Living in the boundaries for Riverdale Collegiate Institute when applying to Danforth Collegiate and Technical Institute, living within the boundaries for North Toronto Collegiate Institute when applying to Northern Secondary School, living within the boundaries for Humberside Collegiate Institute when applying to Western Technical and Commercial School, and those living within the boundaries for Harvard Collegiate Institute when applying to either Central Technical School or Central Toronto Academy. It should be noted that applicants with the collegiate priority are not eligible for the limited technology seats. To learn more about secondary schools without a boundary, the admissions priorities, and the dissolution of the technical and commercial boundaries, please visit the Secondary Schools Without a Boundary website. To learn more about the Out of Area Admissions application, please visit the Secondary Out of Area Admissions website. The video that you've just watched can be uh, found on the Secondary School Without a Boundaries website if people wish to uh, go back and take a look at it. And as the slides that are going to be provided won't have the uh, video embedded in it, but uh, recommend if, if people are interested in learning more, they may want to watch the video more than one time.
But as you've just heard, there are five schools with specialized programming options that are available to applicants from across the city of Toronto. These schools have no boundaries and all students interested in attending one of these schools must apply. They were associated with uh, legacy technical and commercial boundaries that are no longer in effect. And the application process for these schools is included in the secondary out of area admissions application. So there are four secondary schools without a boundary as shown on the screen. Northern Secondary School does have a small collegiate boundary. Students that reside in this area are not required to apply to attend Northern Secondary School. Northern is included in this application process for secondary schools without a boundary, as so many of its students have historically accessed the school through its legacy technical boundary. As a result of the public consultation process last year, a three-year implementation plan was put into place to oversee the admissions in these five schools. For the next three years, applicants will be admitted according to the priorities that were outlined in the video and that are shown on the screen. For priority three, uh, it's important to note again, applicants residing within the collegiate areas that have historically contributed large numbers of students to the former technical and commercial schools and have limited ability to receive an influx of additional students due to the building or site constraints. So again, students that uh, live within the catchment, let's say for Riverdale, if they are applying to Danforth, uh, because Riverdale is so dependent on students accessing Danforth and the site is uh, so over capacity, those students are part of this collegiate priority number three. Then a random selection process will be used as needed to fill remaining seats from these priority groups. Priority four TDSB applicants residing in the city of Toronto, Priority five, non-TDSB applicants residing within the City of Toronto. And lastly, applicants residing outside of the City of Toronto. And we should note uh, that applicants outside of the City of Toronto are not eligible for any of the other priority groups. There are specific resource documents to help you understand which priority you will be if applying to a secondary school without a boundary on the Secondary Schools Without a Boundary website. So in the application um, for secondary schools without a boundary, this is found embedded within the secondary out of area admissions application. There's a little screen grab up on the screen showing you'll have the opportunity to uh, opt to apply to one out of area option or one secondary school without a boundary option or both one out of area option and a secondary school without a boundary option. If you are applying to both, and through the different independent processes are offered a seat in both, applicants may only accept the seat at one school. This visual is a quick overview of uh, some of the secondary application timelines. Uh, this link can be found on the Central Student Interest Program website. But again, all of our open houses are running from uh, November to mid-January. Our uh, Central Student Interest Program application and open houses. They will all happen in three weeks in November from November 4th to 22nd. And the random selection process and offers will begin in early December and they will continue through to late February. The out of area admissions application and secondary school without a boundary application will open on January the 6th and close on the 24th of January. Those offers will happen between February 12th and 26th. During that time frame, uh, grade eight students will be uh, submitting and selecting their courses for their secondary school options. They'll have an opportunity to work through my blueprint and look at the variety of schools that they are considering or perhaps have applied to. And students transfer their choices, um, their course selections uh, to, for their secondary school at the end of February, beginning of March. And then our secondary schools go into timetable development uh, from April until June, looking to build timetables to meet the interests and needs of all of their incoming grade nine class. Number four, what if my child changes their mind about their admission acceptance at a particular school? Well, students and parents and guardians and caregivers are encouraged to carefully consider their school options when attending open houses and help to develop a clear picture of where they might see themselves in the fall. Careful consideration will help to make the next few months easier to navigate. As I just mentioned, offers for central student interest programs will begin to be sent in December and students will have just under one week to accept or decline an offer of, uh, of placement. 
We are hopeful that students who are applying and accepting spaces in central student interest programs have the intention of attending the program for the next four years. But if a student accepts an offer, they can still change their mind. Applicants are asked to communicate that they have changed their mind so that another student can be given the opportunity to attend in their place. Similarly, offers for out of area admission will happen in the month of February. Students have just under one week with their parents or guardians to accept an offer before it expires. Students can change their minds and again, families are asked to communicate uh, the change of decision uh, so that again, another student, if there is on the waiting list, can be offered that space in that school. If a French program student offers a placement at a school other than the French program continuation school and changes their mind, their readmission to French program may be subject to available space. Families in the TDSB are required to submit their course selections through my blueprint by the end of February as final confirmation of where what is above their secondary school selection. Students who attend an out of area admissions school or a central student interest program who wish to return to their designated school by address may do so at an appropriate transition point, i.e. a semester change or the beginning of a school year at the request of the student or the family. If the requested school's out of area admission status is closed, a switch may not be possible until the following transition point. I'm going to turn it, uh, it over to uh, Angela Kakamo from French to continue on with our presentation. Thanks, Rico. Let's jump into number five, secondary French programs. Students may continue core French and French immersion studies at secondary level. Please note that there is no new grade nine extended French as of September 2025. Students who complete the grade eight junior extended French program in June 2025 and who are interested in a continuation of the French program will be accommodated in the French immersion program by address in grade nine in September 2025. For this cohort only, as students from an extended French background, will be in an immersion program, they will be permitted to pursue either the Certificate of Bilingual Studies in French Immersion or the Certificate of Bilingual Studies in Extended French. The TDSB offers a certificate to all students who successfully complete the core French, extended French, or French Immersion programs. On your screen before you, you will find the descriptions of the certificates. Students who complete all four credits, that's grade nine to 12 in core French, qualify for a certificate of achievement in core French. Most secondary schools offer core French through to grade 12. Students will require at least one French or Ojibwe credit to graduate with an Ontario secondary school diploma. To qualify for the certificate of bilingual studies in extended French, Students must complete seven credits in French, four credits in extended French, and three credits in subjects, subject co courses where French is the language of instruction. Students completing eight or more credits in French qualify for an honor certificate of bilingual studies in extended French. To qualify for the Certificate of Bilingual Studies in French Immersion, students must complete 10 credits in French, that's four credits in French Immersion, and six credits in subjects uh, courses where French is the language of instruction. Students completing 11 or more credits in French qualify for an honor certificate of bilingual studies in French immersion. Access to secondary French immersion programs for students currently in French immersion in the TDSB is designated through pathways from grade eight based on address. Students not currently in a TDSB school but who wish to attend a TDSB secondary school for French immersion may inquire directly at a secondary school. Currently, there are 11 secondary schools across the TDSB that offer the continuation of extended French programs, grades 10 to 12, and 15 secondary schools who offer the continuation of the French Immersion Program 9 to 12. As already mentioned, please note that the Extended French Program is currently phasing out. 
There are no new grade nine extended French classes as of September 2025. Students who complete the grade eight junior extended French program in June 2025 and are interested in the continuation of French programming will be accommodated in the French immersion program by address in grade nine in September 2025. Please also note that there are some schools that are closed to out of area admission for French immersion and extended. Students begin French immersion at the elementary school level in kindergarten or grade four. They may continue their program at the school designated for their pathway associated with their home address. If you are attending an elementary French immersion or extended French school as an out of area student, you will attend the French immersion secondary pathway school associated with your home address. This may not be the same pathway school as your classmates if you are not at the elementary school associated with your home address. But how do you know if you are or are not at the French immersion or extended French school associated with your home address? You are attending your elementary school as an out of area student if you applied to the school via out of area formerly known as optional attendance in the first place, or if you have changed home address since you started the French immersion program at that school. If you wish to attend the secondary school that is not associated with your home address, you will have to apply via the out of area admissions mm -hmm. procedure at that school. It is important to note that most secondary schools with extended or immersion programs are closed to out of area admissions for the upcoming year. Please note also, there is no need for a student in grade eight to apply to French immersion at secondary, except in the case where they wish to attend a school not associated with their home address or for that, for that, they will follow the out of area admissions process within the timelines associated. Before you, to find your French school associated to your home address, please click on the French Find Your School address icon at the bottom of the French language page at www.tdsb.on.ca slash French. Next slide, please. To confirm the French immersion program by address, please type in your street name and number. The French program is connected to your home English school by address. The elementary school, the continuation school and secondary school will display. On the screen demonstrated above is an example of how the elementary school, the continuation school and secondary school will display. Students in grade eight French programs are not required to apply for a French program in grade nine, except in a case where they wish to attend a school not associated with their home address. And for that, they would follow the out of area admissions process within the timelines that they were that were discussed earlier tonight. Students begin French immersion at the elementary level and continue to the secondary French immersion pathway associated with their home address. The pathway secondary school for French may be different than the English designated school by address. As mentioned earlier, please note that the extended French program is currently phasing out. There is no new extended grade nine class as of September, 2025. Students who complete the grade eight extended French program in June, 2025, and who are interested in continuation of French program will be accommodated in the French immersion program by address in grade nine in September, 2025. I'm turning it back to you now, Renee. Thanks, Angela. So now we're at tip number six. If your child is currently receiving or may require special education support for the grade eight to nine transition, your child's current school will invite the parent, guardian, and student to school support team meeting or an identification placement and review committee annual review meeting. 
The IPRC review meetings will occur by the end of January. At these meetings, the teams will discuss how to best meet the learning needs of the student transitioning to secondary school. Transition plans will be developed in consultation with the parents, guardians, and the student. These transition plans will be personalized for the student, may involve community agencies or partners, will identify specific and realistic goals based on the student's strengths, needs, and interests, will include timelines for action, and identify the person responsible for supporting the student. During this meeting, the team members will determine the supports available in secondary school and the best placement options for the students. Depending on the needs of the students, a su the support offered may include a special education class offer. This could include uh, intensive support program included gifted or maybe partial integration, withdrawal assistance, indirect support, or the recommendation of a GLE, also known as a learning strategies course. Please also note that the GLS learning strategies course is available to students who do not have an IEP. Students in grade eight intensive support programs are not required to apply to continue in the program in grade nine. This placement process is done through the IPRC process and students will be offered placement in a secondary school. Your IPRC placement may be in a school that is not your English designated secondary school by address. For more information about the grade eight to nine transition for students with special education needs, you are invited to join one of the sessions taking place on November 4th or December 3rd. The link to RSVP is in the chat. I'd like to insert a note to differentiate what you have learned about French language and special education programs. Please note that French language programs and special education intensive support programs are not considered central student interest programs. Students who are in French language programs, such as French immersion or an intensive support program can apply to central student interest programs. Applicants can accept an offer for a central student interest program without jeopardizing their spot in a French language program or a special education program. However, if you accept a spot in a central student interest program, you will be leaving the French immersion program. And once a student has made, been made active at their new secondary school in a central student interest program or in the regular English program, the return to a French immersion program school cannot be guaranteed. Okay, so now number seven, grade nine course selection. Students going into grade nine will take all core courses at the academic or D-stream level. This includes English, math, science, geography, and French. Students will often take physical education in grade nine in addition to an arts course and an optional course. To select courses, students use My Blueprint. Let's take a moment to see what course selection using My Blueprint will look like step-by-step -step for grade eight students. Hello, and welcome to the My Blueprint course selection video series. In this video, we are going to show you how a grade eight student with TDSB will complete their course selections. Start by visiting www.tdsb.on.ca slash find dash your slash school. Select by address and enter your street name. Note, you will not need to add your full address, simply the street name. Click search, and this will display your destination secondary school. If you are looking to apply for a centralized student interest program or out of area admission, scroll down and select the option that best applies to you to learn more. Upon determining your destination secondary school, simply visit www.myblueprint.ca forward slash TDSB and click the green school account login button and enter your TDSB credentials to log in to your My Blueprint account. Upon login, simply click High School from the left-hand navigation menu. Click Add Plan and select your destination secondary school from the drop-down menu. Once course selection is open for TDSB students, upon login, students will see the course selection steps appear at the top of their high school grid. Step one is to add courses. Click either a subject name or the Add Course button to begin exploring opportunities within that school. Click Add Course to add this to your plan. TDSB students entering grade nine are expected to select eight total courses plus two alternate courses. Once your student has added all of the courses to their plan, click the blue review course selections button. 
Step two is to officially review the selections. Once the review is complete, select Submit Selections, and upon submission, students are notified of a successful submission to their destination secondary school. Once students have submitted their selections, they may wish to return to the high school plan. Students will notice that the course selection checklist now displays the submission date and time. Students are no longer able to make adjustments to the submitted courses. If changes are needed, students will need to speak to their classroom teacher. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or concerns surrounding my blueprint, please speak with your student's teacher or email us at support at myblueprint.ca. So we'll move on to number eight, which is an overview of what you need to graduate in high school to earn an OSSD. Remember, when you're planning for high school, in addition to selecting your courses for grade nine, you're also planning for four years of courses towards earning your diploma at a high school. Students starting in grade, starting grade nine in fall of 2024 will have new graduation requirements. Students will need the following 17 compulsory credits to earn an OSSD. This includes four credits in English, three in math, two science credits, and one credit in technological education, Canadian history, Canadian geography, the arts, health and physical education, French, and one credit from the STEM related course groups and 2.5 credits, one in career studies and one in civics and citizenship. The STEM related course groups include courses in business studies, computer studies, cooperative education, math, in addition to the three compulsory, science, in addition to the two compulsory, and a technological education, in addition to the one compulsory credit. Students must also earn 13 optional credits by successfully completing courses from your school's program and course calendar. Optional credits may include up to four credits earned through the approved dual credit programs. Students must also meet literacy graduation requirement to earn a high school diploma. For most students, this means passing the Ontario Secondary School Literacy Test, also known as the OSSLT. If a student does not pass the OSSLT, there are other ways to meet the literacy graduation requirement, including taking the Ontario Literacy course. Students must also earn at least two online learning credits to get a high school diploma. And students and families can please can discuss the option of opting out of this with your high school guidance counselor. Finally, you need to have at least 40 hours of community involvement activity to graduate and earn an OSSD. Students can start collecting those volunteer hours in the summer before entering grade nine. Now, some students may leave high school before earning an OSSD or may be working towards an Ontario Secondary School Certificate or a Certificate of Accomplishment. The Ontario Secondary School Certificate has seven required compulsory credits, including two credits in English, one math credit, one credit in science, one credit in Canadian history or geography, a credit in health and physical education, and one credit in the arts, computer studies, or technological education, and seven required optional credits um, selected by the student from available courses for a total of 14 credits. Students who leave school upon reaching the age of 18 without having met the requirements for the OSSD or the OSSD may be granted a certificate of accomplishment. This certificate is a useful means of recognizing achievement for students who plan to continue certain kinds of training or find employment. So now we're at tip number nine. High school is a new and exciting milestone for students. Students have the opportunity to explore their interests and develop a path to post-secondary. Students will be working towards their graduation, but are also encouraged to participate in extracurricular activities that will create a richer high school experience. Students will also have the opportunity to work on their learning skills, learn outside of the classroom, take a wide variety of courses, engage in experiential learning, and much more. Students will be expected to navigate through their timetable, complete assignments, meet deadlines, enhance their self-advocacy skills, learn how to manage their time, and learn how to work independently and with others. Caring secondary staff will be available to support students throughout their secondary school experience. The circle of care for each student could include their parent, guardian, or other caring adults. As the circle of care of a high school student, you will still remain an integral part of your student's academic experience though they will gain greater independence. 
Parents and guardians will have the opportunity to participate on school council to build a stronger community. Parents guardians will receive report cards, be invited to parent teacher conferences, have open communication with their students teachers, and have an opportunity to observe extracurricular activities when permitted. The school will be a resource for parents and students as they navigate through the Ontario secondary school system. Parents are encouraged to remain involved in their child's experience. Now there are two types of timetables in TDSB secondary schools. The semester timetable reflects four courses that a student will take for half of the year. Semester one would take place from September to January, and then students will experience four different courses from February to June. The quadmester system splits the year into four parts, roughly into nine-week segments. Students will experience two courses per day, every day, per quad. Each timetable allows for students the opportunity to earn eight credits. In the TDSB and throughout Ontario, the vast majority of schools have a semester timetable, with the exception of adult schools and some alternative schools. Well, we are at number 10 of our tips and considerations, which is important dates. Between November and December, we encourage you to attend your elementary school transition event if applicable. Between November and January, we encourage you to attend the secondary school in-person open house and information sessions. Schools will share information about their programming, provide opportunities for you to engage with staff and students, and you'll get to tour the school. The Secondary Central Student Interest Program online application is available from November 4th until November 22nd, and families will have two rounds of offers that will be communicated in December. For more information about the Secondary Central Student Interest Programs, please be sure to attend our webinar tomorrow. The Out-of-Berry Admissions online application will be available from January 6th and will be due on January 24th. There will be three rounds of offers during the month of February where families will hear from schools about the status of their application. Grade 8 course selection via My Blueprint opens on February 10th, and the course selection deadline is March 3rd. Now, before we end our presentation, I would like to share some resources with all of you. All of these resources we have referenced during the presentation. As I just recently said, we encourage you to attend the open house and information sessions as your first and best way to receive information about the various secondary schools and programs in the TDSB. Contact the high schools directly if you have questions about local or central student interest programs, or if you have questions about the special education or additional academic supports that the school may offer next year. Please connect with your current school if you have questions about My Blueprint course selection or special education offers of placement. Also visit our Beyond 8 site for more information about the grade 8 to 9 transition and to access a plethora of resources. The Beyond 8 site under the course selection link will give you more information about how to complete course selection using My Blueprint. Each year, we publish an updated online choices magazine series to support students and families with the grade eight to nine transition, including planning for grade nine, secondary program guide, and the elementary program guide. At this point, I will pass it back over to our centrally assigned principal, Lisa Edwards, to lead our live Q&A. Thank you, Renee. We have a few common questions that came through the Q&A that we're going to answer for everyone before we leave this evening. <clears throat> First question, do I have to go to the open house for my designated school by address? Renee, do you want to answer this one? Happy to take that. Um, thanks, Lisa. So you should absolutely attend the open house for your designated school by address. This is an experiential opportunity to walk around the school, meet staff, engage with students and learn about the amazing programs, extracurricular activities that the school has to offer. If you're thinking about a student interest program, a school that's out of area, an ISP or a French language program, you should also visit those school open houses as well so that you can make an informed decision about where you wanna attend school for the next four years. The schools are putting a lot of effort into creating open houses that will introduce students and families to the school and to the community. 
So yes, please go to the open house of your designated school by address and go to every open house uh, to any school that you might be interested in attending so that you can see all the fabulous things that are happening in TDSB schools. Thanks, Lisa. Thank you, Renee. Another question. So how many choices does my child have for high school? Rako, do you want to answer this one? Sure, Lisa, happy to help. Um, so every student always has their local designated school by address as a choice for high school, uh, as Dr. Rollins has just mentioned. But students can also apply through out of area admissions for one school that either has a limited status or limited sibling or feeder school status. Um, they may also uh, apply uh, um, for a secondary school without a boundary through that application. And they also have the opportunity to apply for a central student interest program. Uh, we'll be talking in more depth about central student interest programs at tomorrow evening's student interest program webinar, uh, where we'll go through the details of that application process. So there are a few options that are available to students uh, in addition to their designated school by address. Thank you, Reiko. Another question. My grade eight child is currently in a gifted program. Do we have to apply for her to continue in the gifted grade in gifted in grade nine? Effie, are you available to respond to this one? Hi, Lisa. Hi, everyone. Yes, uh, your daughter will continue in the in the gifted program um, if that is so. The decision that your family does make. There is going to be a review as your daughter is transitioning from grade eight to grade nine. Um, the school will uh, schedule a review of, uh, of exceptionality and placement and uh, I highly recommend that you attend that review. And uh, at that time, you can discuss um, the, uh, the um, option of uh, staying in the gifted program. And uh, if you all decide that that's where she'll stay and continue in the gifted program, then an offer of placement for grade nine will be made. Um, and uh, the offer will be uh, a program that is uh, that has available space that is closest to you. Thank, Thank you, you. Effie. One more question. We used to have access to Northern Secondary School through its technical boundary. Can you explain how we get our child into Northern Secondary School and go over the priorities again? Reiko, can I please ask you to answer this one? Absolutely. So students from all across the city of Toronto uh, can apply to attend Northern Secondary School. Uh, depending on your specific scenario, uh, you'll, you'll fall into one of the different priority groups. If you already have a child, so a sibling of the applicant, uh, attending Northern Secondary School and returning in September 2025, that applicant will be considered a priority one. So the first one seated um, in, in the application process. Uh, if there is a commitment to uh, participate in technological programming, so there's lots of rich, diverse tech programming available at Northern, uh, and opts to try to uh, be seated in one of those 30% uh, seats for technology, uh, they, their application would be considered a priority too. Uh, if they and they would be seated next into those 30% of seats. If that applicant were not successful uh, in being seated in that process, if there were more applications than there were seats available, they would then be considered with all other TDSB applicants if the applicant is a TDSB student. If you happen to reside in the uh, local catchment area for North Toronto, so that's the collegiate priority for Northern Secondary School, uh, you would be considered priority three. Uh, and so applicants from priority one, two, and three will be seated in the entry grade, so for grade nine. And then we move through uh, and it, when a random selection process is necessary, seat from priority four, which are TDSB applicants, priority five, which are non-TDSB applicants, and lastly, applicants uh, from outside of the city of Toronto. So that's the same application process for everyone uh, who, whether they had access uh, historically through the technical boundaries or not, uh, it's the same process for all, but depending on the individual scenario, that's what the priorities would be. And again, just a reminder that if you happen to reside within the small collegiate boundary for Northern, uh, you, that is the only group of people who do not need to apply to attend Northern. Thanks, Lisa. Thank you, Reiko. 
frequently asked questions and the link to access the frequently asked questions that were answered this evening is in the chat. This will be updated by the end of the week with questions that were asked this evening. We also want to know if your questions and course selections and academic pathway questions were answered today. So please take a moment to complete the Google form that is shared in the chat. At this time, I will hand it over to System Superintendent Ronnie Felsen to bring closing remarks. Thanks, Lisa. Um, everyone, I know there was a lot of information shared this evening. We will be uh, posting the recording of this session so that you can review it as many times as you like. Um, uh, please, as was shared by the team this evening, please do attend open houses that are being offered across the district in our secondary schools. And a reminder that tomorrow evening, Wednesday, October 30th, we are hosting a, another webinar at 7 p.m. for our Central Student Interest Programs Information Session. The online application and open houses begin next week for students and families interest, interested in Central Student Interest Programs in the board. Again, thank you very much for attending this evening, and we hope that the information was helpful to you as you and your children begin their journey towards secondary school next year. Thank you everyone for coming.